Um, hello everyone, my name is Amir Bhangade and in this talk, I'll be uh, discussing approximability of satisfiable KCSPs. And this is joint work with Subhash Koth and Dor Minzer. So let me first define uh, or just mention of uh, uh, well-known constraint satisfaction problems. Uh, so three side is one type of uh, CSP where every constraint is or of three literals. Then three linear is another where every constraint is a linear equation involving three variables uh, or some abelian group. Uh, then there is kn where the arity of the uh, of the predicate is large uh, is the number k where you take like k literals and take all ands of the k literals and here the goal is to find an assignment to the variables uh, that satisfies all the constraints um, if it exists now uh, in a max csp uh, let me define that formally uh, you are given a predicate p uh, and a set of and you have a set of variables x1 to xn uh, taking values from some domain sigma uh, the predicate p is given by this assignment from sigma to the k to 0 1 that just tells us uh, what are the satisfying assignments and what are the assignments that are not satisfying and we have a set of constraints where each constraint is this predicate p applied to k variables so uh, instead of a variable, you can also replace a variable with uh, their literals uh, in, 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 in these constraints. And here the goal is to find an assignment to the variables that maximizes the number of satisfied constraints. So a constraint is satisfied if uh, it evaluates to one. Um, and for an assignment sigma, we define the value of an instance at sigma is the fraction of constraints that are satisfied. And the value of the instance is the max or all the assignments to the variables. Um, for anti-complete uh, CSPs like 3SAT, um, we can't hope to get like the actual satisfying assignment if it exists uh, in polynomial time. So we study approximation algorithms. Uh, an algorithm for a CSP is called alpha approximation if it outputs an assignment with value at least alpha times the optimum, optimal value. Okay, So for example, for 3SAT, if you just pick a random assignment, it satisfies 7 or 8 fraction of the clauses. In expectation, and uh, this is uh, a seven or eight approximation for max three sat. Um, and the question that we are interested in is characterize the approximation threshold for every CSP. So for three sat, you can ask, is that the best seven or eight approximation, or can you do better? If you can, then what is the best constant that you can hope for, or what is the best alpha for the max CSP? Uh, so uh, formally, if the instance is C satisfiable, then can we find an assignment that satisfies at least S fraction of the constraints in polynomial time? Um, so let me define this uh, problem formally, so which is called CS gap CSP. Um, we say that the problem is NP hard if given an instance of the max CSP with this predicate P with value at least C, it is NP hard to find an assignment that has value at least S. And C is called the completeness and S is called the soundness. So there's a huge success in understanding or characterizing the approximation threshold for, for many CS, for all CSPs. And this is the famous result by Raghavendra from 2008. Uh, so I'm not going to define the integrality gap, but basically says that if you give me an integrality gap instance for the max CSP with complete, uh, with uh, uh, SDP value C and the actual integral value S, then one can convert that into a max CSP hardness uh, with the same parameter, with the loss of epsilon. And this is assuming the unique games conjecture. And we also know that this is tight, that there is an algorithm uh, that can give you this uh, assignment with value S or S. Uh, but one issue with this result is that uh, even if the instance is fully satisfiable or in the integrality gap, even if the STP value is one, the only kind of hardness we get out of this result is uh, one minus epsilon versus S, where it says that it is NP hard to find an assignment that satisfies S fraction of the constraints even if the instance is almost satisfiable. And that's so, and, and this is because of uh, uh, either using unique games conjecture or also this is, uh, you lose some parameters in the reduction. So that's why we always lose completeness by a tiny constant. Um, and in this paper or in this uh, project, we're interested in um, characterizing the approximation threshold for every satisfiable CSP. So, uh, the question that we want to understand is given a predicate P, uh, what is the smallest S such that one S CSP, uh, gap CSP is NP hard? Um, so the question is really uh, uh, important because, uh, or non-trivial, 
uh, because even if to under uh, even to, to understand that whether one s gap csp is np hard for s less than one this is a highly non-trivial question and this is a famous dichotomy theorem or the conjecture which was before which is basically to understand for a given predicate whether the max uh, checking satisfiability uh, for that predicate for that csp whether that is in p or np complete uh, and this was recently resolved by Bulatov and Jok, where they, uh, for any predicate P, uh, they basically tell you whether uh, the CSP version of that, whether it is solvable in polynomial time or NP-complete. And so the next natural step is to find the optimal S for every predicate P. Uh, you know, it means uh, I want to find the smallest S such that one S gap CSP for the predicate P is NP-hard. And I want to do this for every predicate. P. So let's look at uh, a few known results about uh, some specific predicates. So for max 3 sat, uh, if the instance is satisfiable, uh, we have this uh, 7 or 8 approximation that I just mentioned at the beginning, uh, and uh, we have a matching in approximately. So, in, uh, so we cannot do better than this, even if the instance is satisfiable. For max 3 lin or an abelian group, where equations are of the form x plus y plus z is equal to some group constant, um, if the instance is satisfiable, then you can actually find the satisfying assignment in polynomial time, and this is by doing some sort of Gaussian elimination. So in this case, the problem is very easy if the instance is satisfiable. Uh, whereas if the instance is almost satisfiable, then the problem becomes extremely hard because uh, then we have this inapproximate result by Haskell saying that in that case, you cannot even beat the random, uh, uh, random assignment algorithm. Uh, it's easy to see that if you assign the variables randomly, uh, uh, then uh, each equation, each constant is satisfied with probably one over G, so which gives you one over G approximation. And Hosta's result uh, says that this is the best algorithm if the instance is almost satisfied. And if we uh, look at max Trillian over non abelian group, groups where the constraints are x dot y dot z is equal to some group constant, then the uh, the situation here is slightly different. Uh, in the imperfect completeness case, uh, the result is still the same. You cannot do better than the random assignment. But if the instance is satisfiable, then you can do some clever uh, Gaussian elimination type of thing to get slightly better algorithm. And the approximation factor depends on the size of the commutator group. Um, and uh, uh, this result with Koth, uh, we showed that uh, this algorithm is optimal in the sense that if, if the instance is satisfiable, then you cannot get better than this approximation um, in, in polymer time, uh, unless P is equal to NP. So uh, one interesting thing here to see is the perfect completeness case, which is uh, this when the input value is one here and here. And here in these algorithms, which are better than the uh, random uh, assignment algorithms, uh, the reason we get better algorithms here is because the linearity of a predicate is used in this algorithm. So let's try to uh, abstract out this linear property of the predicates. So we say that a predicate has a linear embedding if there exists an abelian group G and mappings alpha, beta, gamma from this in uh, the domain to the group such that at least one of the mappings is non-constant. We want non-trivial maps. Mm, and for every tuple which is present in the predicate uh, ABC, if you add the corresponding group elements uh, that uh, come from these mappings, then they should add they should add to uh, the identity element of the group. Okay, so again, so predicate P has a linear embedding if there exists an abelian group uh, and mappings such that uh, uh, there are these. These mappings are non-trivial, uh, at least one of the mappings is non-constant, and for every tuple in the predicate or the satisfying assignment, the corresponding group elements, they add up to zero, the identity element of the group. So let's look at a few examples. So let's look at a predicate uh, uh, that uh, whose domain is the permutation group uh, of order n, and the set of satisfying assignments I'm defining as the, the Tuple of three permutations so that when you compose these three permutations, uh, they give the identity permutation. Okay, and he, here are and uh, I claim that this predicate P one has linear embedding, and here is the linear embedding or the maps. So alpha, beta, gamma, these map the group element S n or the domain S n in this case to this abelian group C two, where uh, I assign to a permutation the parity of the permutation, and all these maps are all identical. So since uh, there are even as well as odd parity permutations in SN, uh, 
certainly these maps are non-trivial they are not constant and one can also show that uh, and it's easy to also see that uh, if you uh, take any pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 such that their composition is the identity then uh, they they sum up to uh, the zero parity or the zero from z2 right according to these these maps uh, and another uh, very easy uh, predicate, uh, such predicate uh, to construct is uh, just take like three linear equation over an abelian group uh, CQ and uh, just remove one of the assignments, one of the satisfying assignments. So if you remove any satisfying assignment or any subset of satisfying assignments from the uh, the three lin predicate, then you also get a predicate that has linear embedding and just the identity map. The mappings are just the identity map. Okay, so that's uh, so that's how we define uh, uh, linear property of the predicates, and this uh, definition can be generalized to k predicates. Uh, there will be k maps, and then all these k maps, uh, all these uh, uh, for every tuple in the satisfying assignment, the sum, they sum up to zero. But in this talk, I'll focus uh, on only three k predicates. So now the question is, uh, can we understand the Satisfy, uh, can we understand the approximability of satisfiable max PCSP where the predicate has some structure and uh, the structure that we're interested in is, let's say the predicate P does not uh, satisfy linear embeddability is, or it's not linearly embeddable. And, uh, um, and usually to show the hardness result, uh, one of the main components in the analysis is the dictatorship tests. So I'm not going to uh, spend time on why these are important uh, in getting approximately, but uh, instead I'll just focus on the dictatorship tests, uh, which I'll define next. So here you are given a function f that maps q to the n to q, um, and a function f from that maps q to the n to q is a dictator function if uh, f of x1 to xn is just some xi. Okay, so it just the output just depends on one of the variables. And here the question is uh, given a, given an oracle access to such function, which, which means you can query the function at different points. You want to decide if uh, f is a dictator function or f is far from dictator functions for some notion of farness. Okay, and again you are allowed to query f at few locations and accept if f is a dictator function and reject if f is far from dictator functions. And since we are interested in satisfiable CSPs or uh, approximability of satisfiable CSPs. Um, uh, if f is indeed a dictator function, we want our test to accept it with probability one instead of like with high probability. Okay, so this one really, uh, uh, this this uh, accepting a dictator function with probability one is really needed if you if you want to understand uh, in a proximity of satisfiable CSPs. And so the natural soundness question is if we have this this restriction, so. Uh, can, how how efficient test can we design in the sense that if f is far from dictator, then we want the test uh, to accept with very small probability. And if you are interested in approximately of the predicate p, then one more restriction on the test is that uh, the acceptance criteria is only the predicate p applied to k queries uh, to f. Okay, so you are only allowed to query f at k locations. And then you're only allowed to apply this predicate P to this K uh, values that you got out of F. Okay, so now let's look at uh, so, uh, some uh, this dictatorship test abstractly. So suppose we query F at K locations, X1 to XK, and these are the, so this is X1, this is X2, this is XK. And let's say uh, we got these outputs, uh, A1, A2 up to AK. Now, since we want every dictator function to pass the test with priority one, which means that, you know, look at maybe the second uh, entry from each of these inputs. Uh, so if F is really the second dictator, we would get this column in the output. And uh, that's why we want all uh, this tuple to be in the set of satisfying assignments, right? So that enforces us to design a test or sample the query so that for each coordinate J, the Jth, uh, the Jth variable from these uh, input uh, they should be in the set of satisfying assignments of P because uh, the, in the end, we are going to apply P to these assignments and uh, output the decision. So one way to design such a test uh, where every dictator passes with priority one is just to sample uh, these K inputs column wise, where each column is uh, sampled, according, uh, sampled from the set of satisfying assignment of P. 
and uh, yeah so so if mu is fully supported on p and if f satisfies uh, the f passes the deterioration test with priority one then you know f is really in the polymorphism of p so again so the, our question is uh, we want to find the smallest s such that if the test passes with priority s plus epsilon then f is close to a dictator function so let's just maybe try to analyze the soundness of the dictatorship test. So let's say uh, you can express that the priority that the test passes as expected value of uh, p of uh, p applied to these k uh, queries, and uh, you can expand this. Uh, so here I have for every sigma p sigma, which just tells you whether uh, the sigma is present in the satisfying assignment or not, which is a zero one value, and then uh, I have expected value of product of k functions where f sub sigma i it's just the indicator function that uh, f at input x evaluates to sigma okay so if sigma is indeed uh, in the satisfying assignment then all these are ones and then you get the contribution and uh, the low degree part of this expression it uh, uh, we can somehow convert that into an sdp based algorithm uh, this is what raghavendra did uh, in his characterization and so we are left with high degree terms. And uh, if we can show that, you know, this high degree part is negligible, then we have like a good algorithm. Uh, and we can also convert this into a dictatorship test with the matching hardness side. So this will really, uh, this is really useful if we can uh, uh, show that the high degree part is negligible. Uh, we, uh, this will be useful to get a tight result for that predicate P. And uh, high degree terms, they are not always negligible. Here's an example of a predicate um, where no matter what the test is, the expression is going to be large, the high degree expression. So again, I did, I did not define the degree of a function uh, formally, but uh, you can think of that as just a normal uh, Fourier degree for now. So let's say, suppose P is linearly embeddable in an abelian group G with embeddings alpha one to alpha K. Uh, and let's say chi be any non-trivial character of G. Uh, let's define these K functions where uh, the ith function, it just takes the input and then applies this character uh, to the mapped value according to the mappings uh, alpha one to alpha K. Okay, so coordinate wise, it just takes the character and evaluates that character on the, so let's say the first coordinate, it takes the character chi and applies that character to the, uh, mapped group element of the uh, first input variable here. So, so let, let's say the first input variable is x1 here, then you take alpha 1 of x1 and evaluate chi on that. Then you do the same thing for the second um, in uh, second uh, coordinate and so on, and it, then you take the product of all these things. So it's clear that f is a really a high degree function because chi is a non-trivial character. So it depends on each of the coordinates. Um, and let's try to uh, co compute this expression, which is just the product of uh, fi's at xi's, which was which is really the same expression as before. And by doing some manipulation, uh, so here I'm just using uh, here, I'm just reversing the product here, and then here I am using the additive pro property of this character chi to bring uh, this inside. So here I get some or all i is equal to one to k alpha i uh, evaluated at xij. Okay, and recall for every coordinate j, we sampled it uh, from the set of satisfying assignment, right? We needed that for a dictatorship test to have the completeness one, which means that if you evaluate this sum uh, on the on this, then it should always evaluate to zero because uh, because p was linearly embeddable and alpha one to alpha k, they really gave the uh, the the mappings for this linearly embeddable condition, right? So this, this whole expression, it sums to the uh, identity of the group. And so everything evaluates to one coordinate wise. And, uh, and that's why this expression evaluates to one. Okay, so here is an example where um, you cannot have a dictatorship test with completeness one and uh, soundness, uh, uh, you cannot have a dictatorship test with completeness one, as well as, you know, uh, in the soundness analysis, uh, you can, uh, show that uh, the contribution from the higher degree terms uh, is negligible. And uh, so there are, uh, so, but but this really depended on, uh, so this example, P was linearly embeddable. So can we at least uh, mm, 
isolate some properties of P where this uh, uh, this particular uh, 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 this particular example does not appear in the sense that uh, really the high degree terms you can uh, say that the contribution from the high degree terms are uh, is negligible. And uh, uh, it is true for some predicates. And uh, so Mosel uh, uh, show that if the distribution mu is connected in some sense, um, which I'm not going to define here formally, then you can control uh, such an expression, expected value of product of functions, where one of the functions is high degree. OK. Um, so but I'll just mention that the connectedness property of mu implies that p is not linearly embeddable. But uh, the other way around is not true. So there are predicates that are not linearly embeddable uh, and are not connected. So for such predicates that are not linearly embeddable, you can't apply Mosel's lemma. OK, and that's where our contribution comes in. So the main result uh, we show is that if you take any predicate P, which is not linearly embeddable, and let's say mu is fully supported on the P inverse 1. Recall that uh, in the dictatorship test, we want a distribution uh, on the column of the queries where that is fully supported on P inverse 1. So you take such a distribution mu. Then we show that for every balanced high degree functions FGH uh, bounded, uh, this expectation is small. So, uh, so this improves the earlier result uh, which appeared in this paper one, where we needed to assume an extra property about this predicate P, which we defined uh, as semi-rich. It's some sort of dense density property of the predicate. We need to have that for every A and B, there exists uh, a C such that uh, A, B, C is a satisfying assignment. And also for every A prime and C prime, there exists a B prime, so that P of A prime, B prime, C prime is one. Um, so you can see this as some kind of a, a dense predicate, whereas in this uh, lemma, uh, we don't need to assume that. So if you just have non-linearly embeddable predicate, then we show that uh, uh, we can control the high degree term. Uh, so, uh, and as an application, we get a dictatorship test. So if P be any predicate that satisfies the following condition, which one is uh, P has no linear embedding, and another is that there exists uh, one S integrality gap instance uh, where every local distribution is fully supported on the satisfying assignment of P. Uh, then uh, then we, we can use this to construct a dictatorship test with perfect completeness and soundness S plus epsilon. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so uh, so this is just a dictatorship test. So we get sort of an optimal dictatorship test uh, for such predicates. But uh, when you want to actually compose this to uh, uh, to get the actual NP hardness result, uh, we don't know how to do that yet. But at least as far as the dictatorship test is concerned, uh, using our main lemma, we can show uh, that we can convert like one S integrity gap instance to a dictatorship test with the same parameters without losing uh, anything in the completeness. So another application is related to additive combinatorics, where uh, here suppose mu is a distribution on sigma to the three, uh, and there are a couple of technical conditions. One is that the marginal distributions of mu on the three coordinates uh, uh, they are uniform on the uh, alphabet, and we also want all x x x to be in the support of mu. And let's say the support of mu cannot be linearly embeddable then we show some sort of uh, 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 density properties at this. So if you take any dense enough subset of sigma to the n, then it is bound to have a non-negligible uh, non negligible fraction of uh, the uh, tuples from uh, this support of the distribution mu. OK, so this is uh, uh, related to uh, the density version of arithmetic progression. If you have dense enough set, then it has uh, of like one to n or uh, of f three to the n, then it has many arithmetic progressions. So, so this this is comparable to uh, uh, such statements where we are showing that if the distribution mu satisfies certain or the support of the distribution mu satisfies this lin uh, non linearly embeddable property, then you have um, such sort of mixing results. So if you take any density of set, then it has many, many such tuples. So the condition two is necessary. Condition one, we need it for technical reasons. And uh, uh, and yeah, so the condition three, we use, to, uh, we use condition three uh, and our main lemma to prove this final conclusion.
And uh, uh, so this also improves the result by Hasler, Hollenstein, and Mosel, um, where they, uh, instead of this condition uh, three, they needed that the support of mu to be connected, uh, which is a stronger condition. So we got the same uh, conclusion, but under a weaker uh, assumption. So let me finish the talk by stating an open problem, which is uh, a generalization of the main lemma that we show uh, to carry predicates. So to, to, to state that, so let P be a predicate which is non-linearly embeddable um, and mu be a distribution which is fully supported on, P, uh, on the satisfying assignments. Then if you take uh, balanced high degree functions, Fi uh, that are bounded, then this expectation is negligible. So uh, we only we could only show it for theory predicates, but uh, we have uh, uh, but we conjecture that uh, uh, this this is this should be true for uh, in general for theory predicates. Thank you for listening to the talk.